Good afternoon, everyone. Today marks the end of our Novena of Hope, but it's also, in a way, the beginning. Because after all we've heard and reflected on in these past nine weeks, we can go forward, accepting the call to a vocation of discipleship with Jesus and Mary. But let's first recall how our Novena theme, Vocation God Calls Us, has enriched our awareness of our Christian vocation. We began the first week with scripture and how God's word is present, helping us to discern the call of God in our lives. Then we saw how God's call to Mary and Joseph enabled them to accept their vocation as parents, the parents of Jesus, and to do that with total trust in God. Then we gained a grasp of the church's sacrificial, sacramental life, how it strengthens us to respond to God's call at certain key moments in our lives, baptism, marriage, single life ordination, religious vows. In any of these key moments, the church supports us and helps us on our vocational journey. We also learned about the enduring beauty of the Vincentian charism in the lives of Vincent, St. Louise, St. Catherine, and also the story of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. And the charism of St. Vincent and the medal are both living signs of our hope for today. And so our final topic for this novena of hope today is our discipleship with Jesus, Mary, and St. Vincent fitting way to end our summer spectacular, if you will. Because in these three, Jesus, the Son of God, Mary, the Mother of the Lord, and Vincent, the Father of the Poor, we find strength to live our call as disciples who in our vocations are responding to what God asks of us. Jesus told his disciples, I came down not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And St. Vincent himself, reflecting on God's will, said perfection does not lie in spiritual ecstasies, but in doing well the simple will of God. And so reflecting on our, on our Lord, our Blessed Mother, and how St. Vincent walked the path of discipleship can give us hope and insight on our own vocational journey. Jesus set a new standard of discipleship for his early followers because he saw them as co-equals, as co-sharers in his life, mission, and ministry. He said to them, I have come as to call you friends, as I have told you everything I have learned from my heavenly Father. So Jesus' vocation was not only to bring the good news, but to be the good news. He persisted constantly in doing the will of the Father even when it led him to suffering and death. And his fidelity brought us to the resurrection and new life that he promises to each one of us. He joined our humanity in a way that has never been achieved again before or after his earthly time. St. Augustine said it best, in God, Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. Our Blessed Mother also lived a life of perfect discipleship from the moment of the Annunciation when she was told of her unique part of the plan of salvation to when she stood at the foot of the cross as her crucified son passed away, Mary was a faithful disciple. She listened attentively, reflected prayerfully, and was a faith-filled presence for Jesus and then later for the disciples and the church. Mary could not change the trajectory of Jesus' life suffering or death, but her patient faith and openness to God's will showed the way for us. Her vocation on earth was to witness to the life of her son, and after her assumption, her vocation became to be our mother and our intercessor. She shares in our greatest joys and consoles us in our moments of deep sorrow. St. Vincent de Paul is also another example of vocational call to Christian discipleship. But let's be honest here. Unlike Jesus and Mary, it took Vincent a long time to get it right. He was an ambitious young man, ambition for ordination and then for advancement from his rural farm in southern France to 
the prestige of Paris, where he gained access to salons of society and influence. Not exactly a good example of a call to Christian discipleship, is it? But Vincent was converted to Christ forever when he met and served the poor. They opened Vincent's mind and heart because in them he saw the suffering Jesus. And the parable of the last judgment in Matthew's Gospel was for Vincent a very haunting reality, especially the last line, whatever you did for these the least of mine, you did it for me. In contemplating the lives of Jesus, Mary, and St. Vincent, we see that by living out the vocation God set out for them, they became enduring witnesses of God's love and instruments of his grace. We too are called to witness to God's love and to be instruments of his grace. And we can do that by how we use our time and our talents. Our Christian call began at baptism. It's been nourished with the sacraments we've received. So no matter what our age or background, we are all ready. As you may know, vocation comes from the Latin word vocare, meaning to call. And it's a lifelong call, a challenge that we must hear and respond to every day. As Jesus' disciples, it's our vocation to listen, to pray, and to respond to that call in service of our God and neighbor to become instruments of his grace. And Jesus, Mary, and Vincent show us by their lives an example that actions speak louder than words. It's not just what we say or how we pray, but what we do that matters most. And our Christian vocation as disciples is not meant to be a singular or solo journey. Remember, Jesus sent the disciples out together. And as our weekly novena services show us, especially today, strength comes in numbers. So while our vocational call is unique and personal, it's lived out in a community of faith that we gather today. So perhaps you can consider this Monday novena your home or home away from home, your community, the place to bring your hopes and dreams, your joys, your sorrows, your accomplishments and your undone plans. Because in this house of Jesus, Mary, and Vincent, you are welcome to here always. And you, are come, you can come here and embrace your Christian vocation, the call to discipleship, and to pray that others will do so as well. As we deepen our vocation as Christians in prayer and good action, we lead by example, and we draw others to follow the way of Christ. Finally, I just offer two simple practical ways we can be God's instruments of grace in our vocation call. First, pray for vocations to religious life, whether it be priesthood, the sisterhood, or the brotherhood. Secondly, perhaps take time to think of someone you know who might have a religious vocation and encourage him or her to consider religious life. Because in so doing this, you may touch his or her heart in a way that God will make them ready to respond. And St. Vincent said it all and said it best. Your heart is your greatest gift. That is all the good Lord wants from you.